Right, we're going to look at a straightforward workflow, which will involve importing a photograph we've taken from the Photos app, giving it some tonal adjustments, and then finishing it off with some sharpening, and finally exporting it. So I'll go ahead and choose to add a new document by tapping the plus icon here, and I'll choose Import from Photos. So under All Photos, I'll just pick a suitable image here. And the image will then open in what is known as the Photo Persona, which is this icon up here. And this is where we will do the majority of our image editing work. Straight off the bat then, this image is lacking some punchy contrast. It was shot using a flatter picture profile on my camera, so let's add some contrast back in. Now, one very easy way to do this is to navigate to the Filters Studio on the right hand side here, and simply choose Auto Contrast. This will evaluate the image and manipulate the contrast so that the image's tones fill the histogram without clipping. If we jump across to the Metadata Studio for a second, we can see this in action. Notice how the tones in the histogram span nicely across the image. Of course, we can also adjust the contrast manually. So I can undo that Auto Contrast filter by tapping the Undo button down here. Notice also the histogram changes too. Then I shall move across to the Adjustments Studio. And this is where we'll find a series of non-destructive image adjustments that are added as additional layers to our document. So right at the top here we have a brightness and contrast adjustment. So we can tap that to add it to our image. And I can drag right on the contrast option here to increase the contrast and I can just back the brightness off a bit by dragging left on the brightness option. So while we're in the adjustment studio, let's also experiment with the colors in our image. So I will scroll down and find HLS adjust, which stands for hue, saturation and lightness. So I can tap this adjustment to add it. Then I can also tap the adjustment studio icon here to hide it and gain a bit of my workspace back. Now we can very easily shift the hue of our image tones here by dragging on the hue slider. So I can drag to the right and begin to redden the tones slightly. And I'll also drag saturation left to reduce the overall color intensity. I'll perhaps take that a tad further as well, like so. Now, next I want to tap the range option here, and I'm given a range of color tones to target. For example, I can target reds, then I can increase the saturation, thereby intensifying just the red tones in the image. Next, I can select cyans, and once again, increase the saturation. Notice the sky is turning a very rich blue color. We can also bring luminosity down to darken the cyan tones slightly, creating more of a contrast between the sky and the foreground building here. Okay, a final step for tonal adjustments then. I'll open up the Adjustments Studio again, and I'll scroll down and choose Selective Color here. This allows us to make some more subtle adjustments to the image's separate color tones. So sticking with reds for our range option, I'm going to drag cyan to minus 100. And this will help deepen the red tones further. Then, moving across to cyans, we'll drag the cyan slider all the way to 100. And this will make the sky's blue tones even richer. We can also influence the cumulative tones in the image, represented here as whites, neutrals, and blacks. I'll select neutrals, and I'll drag yellow to the left slightly. And this will give the image a subtle reddish tint. Right, that takes care of the tonal adjustments. Now you may remember my referring to layers earlier. If we move across to the Layers Studio here, 
you'll see that these three adjustments we've used have been added as layers. This means they are non-destructive, so at any point we can double tap a layer to bring up its settings, and we can also show and hide it by tapping the checkbox icon next to it. Let's finish this image off with some sharpening then. Now, I only want to sharpen the building and foreground and leave the sky alone. And we can do this by having an active selection before we go ahead and apply our sharpening filter. So then, to create this selection, we need to move across to the selections persona up here. Notice how our tools on the left change. So I'm going to select the Smart Selection brush, which can create selections that snap to pixel edges. Now, just a key point here, the Selection brush works on whichever layer you have selected. So to create an effective selection, we need to tap and select the background pixel layer, which is our image. Then all we need to do is just tap and drag across the areas we wish to select. So I'm going to tap and drag across the building here, like so. And then I'm going to drag across into the foreground and the foliage here, like so, until we've covered most of the areas and created our selection. So once we've got the selection we need, it's a case of moving across to the Filters Studio in this case, then scrolling all the way down until we find Unsharp Mask here. I'll tap this filter to begin applying it. So with sharpening, we need to specify an appropriate radius and factor. Now I'm just going to pinch with two fingers to zoom into the image and get a clearer idea of how our sharpening is going to work. So as we drag on the Radius option and reach higher values, we begin to add what's known as Local Contrast. But in this case, I don't want that. Rather, I just want to add some subtle fine detail enhancement, which actually requires a low radius value and a high factor value. So rather than dragging, we can also tap each of these options down here like so. And this will bring up a little calculator interface, meaning we can punch in the exact values we want. So for example, I'll punch in 3 for the radius and just tap off anywhere to confirm it. Then I'll change factor to 50. OK, once we're happy, we can just tap the check icon to apply the filter. And then to zoom back out quickly and fit the image to screen, we can double tap with two fingers on the canvas, like so. Then finally, to get rid of this selection, we can two finger tap anywhere on the canvas and choose deselect, like so. So we're now finished with our edits and it's time to export our image. Now then, up top here, we have the document menu on which we will find Export. OK, so this allows us to export into a number of formats, including JPEG, which is selected by default. So we can leave all the JPEG settings at their default values and tap OK. And this will bring up the Cloud Storage Saving option. So under iCloud Drive here, I'll just navigate down to a folder called Work and tap that to save the JPEG into that folder. Also, just a nice, quick, easy way to save your image is to go to Export once again. And this time, once it's finished generating the export, go to Share in the bottom left here. And we have a number of Apple sharing options, but we have Save Image here. And if we just tap that, that will then save it to our Photos library. So very quickly, if I just come out of the app and swipe across to Photos, we'll see here under All Photos, our exported image. All right, and that is that. I hope this video was useful in demonstrating some of the basic workflow of opening, editing, and exporting an image. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.